Hello YouTube friends. I've got a bit of a project on the go and I thought I'd show you the beginnings of it and my thought processes and then I'd carry on with it and show you how I get on. Now this all started when I was making my granddaughter Agnes some clothes for her doll and I got I found this big pile of old jeans upstairs in the in my store which are all you know jeans that have worn knees or you know no longer jeans that I want to wear and I made Agnes's doll do you remember Agnes's doll the one with the wild hair she just calls it doll it's just that's its name so for Easter I made doll a pair of jeans I knitted a little uh, jumper for it her <laughs> and I made a dress using this Indian block printed fabric that's all I've got left of the fabric that I brought back from India when I went 10 11 years ago I bought lots of this uh, striped fabric block printed stripe and I bought a lot of florals as well but I haven't got many of any of them left now but I had these little bits left here and I had this big pile of denims so I made Agnes's um, doll's clothes and she really liked them and uh, I was really pleased with how they turned out but it meant that this fabric and these jeans were all on the table so I started scratching my head about something that I've been wanting to do for the longest time and um, so <laughs> you may be all familiar with this coat that I love to wear uh, well pretty much all the time but it's very warm it's a winter coat I bought this coat online a few years ago and it's just lovely scraps and patches of beautiful Indian fabric um, all sewn together any old how and it's my it's a lovely coat I didn't make it people often say did you make your coat no I didn't but it's getting to be too warm to wear that on a daily basis now uh, as we're you know moving into April and into May so it's been on my mind now for ages to make a coat a bit like that just a jacket that um, I can just wear when it's a bit cooler now I've been thinking about it for ages and to that end I bought myself this book so this is uh, uh, no affiliation with these people but this is called the book of borrow and it's all about the Japanese technique of stitching fabrics together to make bigger fabrics. It's, it's a make do and mend uh, technique that uh, was used um, you know, hundreds of years ago by people who wanted to save every tiny little scrap of fabric. And as I've been reading the introduction to this, it says that the, uh, the younger generation uh, uh, would look at these old fabrics and see them as being uh, you know the indication of, of poverty in the family and they encourage the older people to get rid of them to burn them and, or, or throw them away but now in the last 20 or so years this has become such a technique of um, wearing the the patched sides of the garment to be seen to be part of the stitch pattern uh, this borrow technique so with that in mind and I, I bought this book it's a nice book and it's got some interesting projects in um, and I'll, you know, I'll show you uh, some bits of this book. But the bit that I'm interested in is this, it's called the Han Ten Jacket. Han Ten Jacket. And it's, it's going to, if this works, it's going to be a jacket that is just not a great long coat, but just jacket sort of size. So I've been reading and reading this before I took my scissors to anything. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link to this book in the description below. I think there are many, many resources, many places you can go online and find um, uh, how to do this Japanese stitching technique. And I'm not sure that's even what I'm doing here, but I'm using this as an inspiration. Now, I'll just put the scissors on so the page stays open. But in looking at all these bits of fabrics that I love, these bits here, and in my head I've got some other bits upstairs that I'd like to use as well. My thinking is that the whole of the outside of the jacket could be denim, 
There's loads and loads of these bits of jeans and it could be that I patch them together in this Japanese type way but with some little, I don't know, I haven't even, well I've kind of begun, I'll show you how far I've got. But it also occurred to me that uh, these things here that I've been making, these are the um, um, stripped piece liberty pieces that I've been doing. On the end card I'll leave a link to the to the video where I was making these and I've got loads of them and the idea they're stripped onto paper the idea is that you then rip the paper off when you want to use them and I had this idea that this might make a really cool lining for this coat. Now originally my th so my thinking's morphing all the time and changing all the time my original thought was that I would use, um, make the inside maybe out of these, make the outside out of jeans, and then put some wadding inside, batting wadding, and quilt it. But then I think I've gone off that idea now because it would make it warm like this coat. And the idea is to make a cool sort of coat to, uh, to wear as the weather warms up. So I've gone off the idea of quilting it with batting in the, in the layers. It might just be a lining and an outer. That's how it's looking at the moment. So in this book, uh, I'll show you uh, the pages of this book as I'm talking. There's um, a pattern, a very, very, very simple pattern that's just based on blocks of fabric. And so I found this I have yards and yards and yards of this stuff, which I have no idea where I got this from. It's really nice though. It's cotton and it's got a little bit of a pattern in it and it's a little bit thicker than uh, ordinary weight cotton, which is probably why I've still got it because I've never found a use for it. But I've got all the pattern pieces and I made myself this um, template. What would you call this? Toile. That's what dressmakers call what I've just made here, a toile. So I made this um, toile, let's put it on. And it's not a complicated pattern at all. And it fits fine, I like it a lot. I mean, I've got to decide what I'm doing with this bit, because that bit at the moment, I look a little bit like uh, a surgeon getting into my um, my gown to do some operating but I've got so I've got to do something or other maybe not to do something with this bit here I've cut the back properly and so in the book there's a little pattern for the scoop out of the back and it may be that I just make a bigger scoop at the front but the sleeves work fine that's the kind of um, drape that I kind of imagined I could I could take those in a bit if I felt like it and so the, this toile works fine. It's just exactly what I want. Now, two things occur to me. This is great and it's 100% it, it, it's, uh, cotton. Why don't I just dye this with indigo and have that as the inside of the jacket? That's quite a good idea, isn't it? So I could just dip this in a, an indigo dye, dye bath I always like making an indigo dye bath. I did an indigo video not so long ago and, and sold um, those indigo scraps, didn't I? And those, those indigo packs to make the indigo dog <laughs> or whatever you want to make. And so I have some little bits and pieces of that left, nothing like enough to, to make this with, but I could dye this. So that's one thought. Then the other thought is to sew these together and make myself a lining out of these. And then the other thought is that somehow or other I make this, these pieces of jeans that I'm cutting up now. The funny thing about jeans is they're not straight and also some of them have got a bit of a stretch in. So I've got to find, so I've cut that leg off. I quite like the idea of using the hem of the jeans. This is the, the bottom of a leg. That might be quite cool to use as the bottom of the of the jacket or as the bottom of the sleeve. I don't know. So I think uh, I'm going to experiment a lot with all the different techniques that I'm thinking of and we'll see how far my thoughts and ideas get me. I'd also like to do some hand stitching into this 
you know to to look a little bit like that um, Japanese uh, kind of um, uh, look the burrow technique and I'd also like to use some of this um, striped Indian fabric there's a little tiny bit this is the last of it and there's a tiny little bit of of this lovely blue colour left which would go very well with the uh, denim wouldn't it so that it might be that that puts in an appearance on a cuff or something so I'm going to invite you along on this journey. I'm really at the beginning of the thinking of this. This is as far as I've got is making this strange <laughs> white thing here. Um, but I'm going to carry on reading a bit more of the book. I'm going to see if I can uh, cut these denim jeans apart and make them work on this jacket. And we'll see where we go. I really want to make the sort of jacket that I'll wear all the time. So um, sometimes when I make clothes, I mean, I don't make clothes very often, but the, um, they're not that great. <laughs> and so there's always something a bit wrong with them, so usually. So, uh, and so I don't wear them. I'd really like to wear this one <laughs> all the time. So I'm going to put a little bit more thought into making this one. First thought is, should I make up an indigo dye bath and dye this and make this the lining? I think I should. Oh, and then the other thing, this coat that I'm about to show you now, this jacket, hasn't got pockets. And I think that a garment without pockets is just a waste. So this is definitely going to have some sort of pockets, big pockets. I've got an idea about how I might do that. But you'll come along for all of these stages and I'll show you uh, what it is I've got in my head to do. I'll film it all and uh, um, yeah, join in. Join in. You make one. It's not hard. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Is it hard? I haven't started yet. It's got to be sort of like um, an intuitive kind of um, journey that I'm going to go on now with this jacket. And if I succeed, I'll wear it all the time. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> right. Watch this space. Well, actually, for you, it's just going to be the next second, isn't it? For me, I've got a couple of days of working this out now and doing some tests. Right, catch up with you. Well, that was only a second for you, but what an interesting few days that's been for me. I've been down the biggest, deepest, most extensive rabbit hole watching videos about uh, this technique and uh, learning more about it and buying some bits and pieces as well. And so um, the last time you saw me, I was wearing this thing that's on the back here and it's the uh, it's a good shape. It's a it's an approximate shape. I've kind of decided over the last couple of days that I might make it just a little bit more fitted, not fitted because I don't like fitted things, but I won't make it quite so sort of dressing gown, I think, maybe. So what I've done, I've been collecting together these fabrics that you saw last time, but I found some more as well. So this is all the stripe here. And then here, there are lots of, not that piece, but these pieces, there are lots of bits of um, my indigo dyed fabric and some little bits of floral Indian fabric. So these are little bits of fabric that I might use as fillers, uh, little accents. And then the next thing I've been doing is taking these things. I have about maybe six pairs of jeans and unpicking them. Whoa, what a task that's been. I've mostly been sitting out on the bench outside in the sunshine and I've picked off quite a lot of pockets. What I might use, or more likely, we'll see in a minute, I might use the bit behind the pocket which is where the jeans have faded over time, but the bit behind the pocket has stayed really bright. And that looks quite cool. So I've got the pockets here. Another thing that I've discovered as I've been unpicking these is that sometimes if I'm careful, I can actually save the thread. If it all pulls out in a nice big long razzle, I can save the thread from the jean seams to use to do some stitching. So I've wound those onto a uh, card and onto bobbins here. Oh, hello. Are you going to, are you going to move along or are you going to settle down? You're going to sit there. 
Probably not. So the things that I've been doing then is uh, unpicking the jeans, sourcing little bits of interesting fabric, uh, like I say, saving these, but I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. Now, I will leave a couple of links to my favourite ones in the description below. But what I've done with the scraps of uh, jeans fabric, I've actually cut out each component part. So each sleeve, each front and the back, and I've sewn them together and I want to show you those now. Uh, because I think um, I think you'll enjoy my process of how I'm putting this together. Now, inevitably, I haven't been very far down this fantastic road that I'm on without coming across sashiko, which is the beautiful Japanese embroidery style uh, that you see on a lot of these uh, old fabrics. And so there's lots of tutorials about stitching sashiko <laughs> and I've been copying some of the patterns I like best. This is a lovely pattern here that I've done a photocopy of and uh, some other uh, little patterns that I might incorporate into these pieces of fabric. So what I'm going to do now then is show you the individual pieces that I've made for each of the um, pattern pieces for this jacket. So let's start with this piece. This is the legs of two jeans and um, when I unpicked this one, this is actually the hem of this one, I left all these little funky bits of blue at the top here and I've stitched this one together by using um, a little slip of this Indian fabric here. This green Indian fabric. So. I'm going to probably just pin them up where they would go on the jacket itself. So that one, don't worry about the neck. I'm thinking about how the neck should be. So that one's sort of there. So that one will sort of go there as one front. And then this piece here and this is what I was talking about with the taking off the pocket and finding that lovely dark blue there. So I've got that as a feature and stitched these together. We can have a closer look at these in a minute. This is an, the second front. Like so. Now this is um, one of the sleeves. So if you imagine, I've used the bottom of the jeans for the hem of the sleeve. So if you imagine that's like that, but if it was this one, it's got this lovely little piece of fabric sewn into there. So this one's a sleeve here. And I'm going to lay it out, opened out. Now this second sleeve here, which I stitched together with some stripy fabric, but I also started some of this embroidery. So this is this sashiko embroidery, and I just did this little grid effect. I have this water erasable pen that I, 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 um, I very carefully drew it out onto, and then that just dissolves when you do the stitching over the top of it. So that's a second sleeve there and that one would go there. I'm running out of pins. Got some pins here. But this new design board's really furry and it holds on to even heavy stuff like denim. So that one's the second sleeve. These are the two fronts. And then the back is in one piece. And so here it is. I've pieced together lots of squares of, of old jeans with all these lovely different colours. And I did this on my sewing machine so that there's quite a few sewing lines on here. And I left that frayed edge there. And again, this is the bottom of the pairs of jeans here, 
to, to create the hem and then up towards the top I, I put a big block of this fabric in here and so I'm going to have to pin this up I might have to step on my stool to pin this one up because I'm going to pin it up upside down meeting up with the meeting up with the shoulders That's approximate. Well, it's not, is it? No, hang on. I'll just move it off to one side because that's not lining up well. That's better. There we go. Pretty good. And so that's kind of like the layout. But then if you remember, I talked about a garment not being any use at all if it hasn't got pockets. And the way that I think I might do the pockets, this is just as an idea at the moment. I've made these two patches here and this one I might just stitch it along here and that will form a pocket there and then I made another one, I haven't finished this one yet, I haven't sewn that down with just two different blues of denim and that one might go like that so that's very roughly how it might go now what I want to do though is sew into this a lot more and add in some more little tiny bits of uh, Indian fabric I've got this these tiny little pieces I mentioned didn't I that I brought some fabric back from India and this is all that's left is these small bits here but I think that just using this tiny little bits and pieces of maybe I'm not quite sure maybe just stitch it somewhere onto the um, onto the body of the coat somewhere but before I do that I want to sew quite a lot more stitches like that one there and so that's as far as I've got with it it's been quite obsessive. I haven't stopped over the last few days uh, unpicking jeans and hand stitching and machine stitching and sitting outside on the bench. It's been really, really lovely. I think I've decided that I will dye this pattern behind here, this toile, with indigo and have that as the lining. I think I'll make the lining quite simple. But I was talking to my daughter Martha yesterday and she was saying that it would be quite cool on the lining to have a couple of pockets on the inside. So I might save some of these to do that, to have some inside pockets. That would be fun. I've loved doing this. It's taken over my life for the past few days. I haven't been able to think of anything else. And I, like I say, I've been watching videos experimenting with different techniques and uh, that's what I'm going to do next is do some more stitching. So I think the next time you see me with this jacket I'll be a lot further along with it maybe I'll have pieced it together maybe I'll have done the dyeing but I'll bring you along for the journey and you'll be able to see how this one ends up. Uh, thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I've enjoyed discovering about this amazing technique and give us a thumbs up and a like if you have and subscribe. That would be fantastic. Take care everyone and I'll see you next time. <laughs>